Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller, the podcast. I'm joined by Seth. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for finding us on, uh, on, the, on the internet. Now, these shows originally aired on Brookings Radio, but now they're all here for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. There you go. Sit back, enjoy the show, relax. Uh, let us know if you want to see anything on future shows. As we said, the, this comes out live in the Brookings area, but enjoy this archive episode. Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. This week, we continue to explore the craft beer hop obsession, looking at the impact on brewers. Craft beer fans can't get enough hops. Big and bold IPAs continue to be far and away the most popular of the craft beers. And it's not just big IPAs, of course, that use hops. Virtually all beers these days are made with hops, often called the spice of beer, for the key flavor, aroma, and bittering elements they provide. And they also happen to be a natural preservative. More hops are being used all across the country every day. Hops are great, and people love putting them in the beers, and, and the brewers love trying the new hops. Uh, but with the number of breweries increasing, the number of hops that are utilized in these beers, uh, it becomes a competitive market. Uh, you know, they, there's a finite number of resources. Hops take a while to grow. You know, if you put a hop yard in, you don't get a crop production usually the first year. It's usually the second or third year that you get an actual production. That's on. Seth Cook from Wooden Legs Brewing in Brookings. In addition, more and more craft brewers springing up all the time, increasing that competition. So with all the brewers uh, looking to use these new hops in new ways and, and, and use more hops, not only by volume, uh, just because people are making more beer, but because we're using more hops in the beer we already are making, there becomes a shortage or there becomes a, a choke point. This, of course, is exacerbated by the fact that the hops are a crop that's susceptible to weather, just like anything else. So if there's a drought, if there's, uh, if there's hail, if, you know, if there's a, a disease that goes through the, the crops, there's less hops. Most brewers contract for their hops well ahead of time to guarantee supplies. So they decide, hopefully a year in advance, of how many hops they're going to use. And they'll send that over and say, I'll buy, agree to buy whatever volume of hops at a certain price, and I will guarantee that. So the, so the farmer has some protection in knowing what they want to grow. Of course, you can see some issues there, potentially. could be tough to change recipes or add a last-minute new IPA to your brewing schedule. They're left committed to the hops they already have. Or the, another problem would be if you're a smaller brewer, sometimes you don't get your contracts Approved, you know, a big brewer says I'll buy you know ten thousand pounds, and of course the the uh, the person that's issuing the contract says, okay, that's easy. And another brewer comes in and says I'll buy eleven pounds. They're you know sometimes they're on the outside looking in. So what brewers like us do is I actually spend time to scour the internet and scour sources to buy hops for our beer. And I've spent many a day calling different hop agencies, calling uh, different hop brokers and saying, I need this type of hop. I need it at this this weight. I've even at one point for one of our critical beers uh, went down to Sioux Falls and bought homebrew hops at a tremendous expense. But that was where we could find them. Yeah, smaller brewers often have to be flexible. Hops, you know, have similar qualities between different varieties. So sometimes we'll just by necessity have to switch out a hop. Some of our beers that we really really enjoy like split rock creek and 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 even the what we got we try to put on hop contract knowing we're going to make a bunch of those but then there is some of the dagwood sandwich beers where we say well what hops can we get <laughs> and let's make a fun ipa out of this more on the craft beer hop obsession when beer untapped continues in a moment Welcome back to Beer on Tap with Perry Miller as we continue our discussion of the craft beer hop craze. Some of the hottest hops these days are those that provide crazy citrus and tropical fruit flavors. Many of them, Amarillo, Mosaic, Citrus, Simcoe, are proprietary and growers must be licensed and pay to grow them. Seth Cook at Wooden Lake says... He uses some of those hops on occasion. The intellectual property has gone into developing the hop that it can only be grown by people that are licensed to do it. So it's, it's you know, uh, just like any agricultural product that you have to, you know, pay to the right people to get that. I am not a huge fan of licensed hop varieties like that. Um, they are good, but I'm not 
this is probably more of a holistic statement. I am more of an open source co- community and collaborative. I think people should be able to grow hops. He is a fan of many of the traditional American hops. Anything that starts with the letter C. Um, <laughs> you have Cascade, Centennial, Chinook, uh, Cluster, Columbia, Columbus, Comet, Crystal. I mean, they, these all are, are great hops. Um, I actually like the Glacier hop a lot. I, I think that's a good hop. Uh, we use some Noble hops um, we use a lot of magnum hops for bittering. Magnum hops, I think, have a good... We don't dry hop or, or use those late in boil, but they're pretty high uh, alpha acid. They have some history in German hops. Um, you know, nuggets are a pretty pretty decent hop that, that we've used before. Seth hopes they'll one day be able to source some of their hops locally. They've also tried some hop blends lately. Good success with those. Um, blended hops are nice because it allows us to, or it allows the uh, the provider uh, to really kind of change how the hops are based on the year. So we can use a blended hop that allows them to do some of the gross parts of getting it, figuring out how the plant has been produced this year. You know, the alpha acids and all that. It takes out. It takes. It, alleviate some of that pressure he wants to try some of the new zealand hops that are currently gaining popularity in america we have not played with a lot of new zealand hops yet if we're you know that's that's one thing that we probably should do is probably do a new zealand ipa or something just haven't haven't played with those a lot yeah those are fun they have some crazy flavors coming out of some of those yeah berry and and, you know berry and pineapple and you know you can make a beer that tastes like pineapple and pine tree and mango or something but uh, we haven't played much with those yet finally don't miss more live music of wooden legs in brookings sunday evening another pop-up show this time featuring the music of kayla tingle Check it out. Enjoy the music of Kayla Tingle Sunday evening brought to you by Zip Dish and Wooden Lakes Brewing at Brookings. That's it for this week's edition of Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Until next time, drink local and drink responsibly. Thank you for listening to this archived edition of Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Feel free to listen to other episodes. And if there's anything you'd like us to talk about on a future show, please let us know. Thanks again.